Hold on. All right, let's look to prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day that we have been blessed with. Thank you for giving us a great start to 2021. Thank you, Lord, for this virtual roundtable and for Lady Kay for organizing this and bringing us all together for your goodness and your mercy and expressing how good that you have been to each of us, Lord. I ask that you just bless all of us to get whatever we need to get out of this particular virtual roundtable and let us have fun while doing it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate it. Sure, a few more are going to be joining us, but we're going to go forward and get started. Our topic tonight, what is, uh, I'm sorry, avoiding distractions and detours in 2021. My first question is, y'all know I like to start off with questions. What does 2021 look like for you? And anyone can jump in. What does 2021 look like? And you don't have to give all the details, but give us a little bit of what it looks like for you. Um, Edwin, you want to start us off? What does 2021 look like for you? Oh, 2021 looks like for me, um, a lot of goals going to be achieved in 2021. Uh, me and my wife, we... we We've been talking, we've set a lot of goals in 2020. So, you know, 2021, we're looking to achieve and, and, and reap the harvest. I know that's right. That's right. And it's a great thing when you all can do it together. Teamwork makes the dream work. And I think a lot of people end up getting married and, and everybody's still trying to do their own thing. But once the couples realize that if we come together and bring our goals together and accomplish them together, then I have somebody that can help me, you know, accomplish those goals. And it won't take me as long because they actually may have some of the resources that I need. So it's a blessing to have a, a team player there with you. Um, and, and in that as well, you can't definitely can't be selfish, you know, because if you, you're selfish, that's going to be the distraction or the detour that holds you back. My next thing, Brittany, you want to tell us what 2021 looks like for you? <laughs> uh, I have a lot of goals too, just as my husband said, personal ones, and then ones that we're working on as a cohesive unit. But for me, my personal self, I want to get healthier physically, mentally, and just be the best Brittany that I can be and step into my full purpose. That's what I'm planning on this year. Awesome. Oh, that sounds good to me. At least, at least you got something to work toward. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people that don't have any goals to work toward. They just kind of crossed over into 2021 and going to continue down the same path. Uh, Mama, are you with us? <laughs> did you um did you get it unmuted? I can't hear you. Can't hear you. While she's working on that, I'm gonna Okay. Go. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. I'm here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany was speaking to you earlier. Hey, sweetie. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. Uh, do, do you have any goals for the year that you're trying to accomplish for 2021? Yes, ma'am, to rest more. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a yeah, that's I've, I've been, I've, I've, you know, I've been working 55 years, so I'm tired. So, you know, hey, okay. uh, every chair, uh, couch I pass by, I intend to visit. <laughs> Look, now listen, Edwin and Brittany, those are retirement goals. That ain't yes, that is. Yes, 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 yes. yes. When, when you work 55 years, it's time to retire, right? <laughs> oh, yes, yes ma'am, it definitely is. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, yes. In, enjoy then. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so, um, I don't want to really dwell on 2020 too heavy, um, but I do want to look at an overview of 2020. And I'm going to let you all help me with that as well. Uh, in 2020, there was a lot that went on. What were some of the distractions and detours that happened in 2020? Not necessarily, it can be with yourself, but I'm more so looking for corporate answers, like, you know, answers that um, kind of affected all of us. Brittany, can you give us a few? I would say one of them, the school system was shifted because they were forced to 
uh, go to virtual learning. This is something that has never been done before. And it made a, a big change because a lot of the students didn't have computers and still today I think a lot of them don't have computers mm -hmm. um, so it just it made a, a big shift in the educational system what what do you have Brittany well I think all of us have been dealing with the fallout of like the coronavirus and just um it, it shook up the whole way that we do things and really um, when I think about it I think about church and you know how the saints would always say that the church is within you. Mm -hmm. It's not in the physical building. So I think that this year with coronavirus and everything going on, you know, it has really challenged us to really look at ourselves and be like, we are the church. So what message, you know, are we sending out to the people, you know? Um, that's so correct. I think that's one. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What about you, Edwin? What, what, was, what was the distraction or a detour in 2020? Well, definitely the, the the elephant in the room is for the coronavirus. Uh, it, you know, it, it's like y'all y'all already said previously. It shifted everything from schools to religion to faith to uh, <laughs> you know jobs. Everything was was shaken by the coronavirus. Uh, so I, I would I would definitely say uh, the coronavirus was one of my big distractions because you know it affected me by you know I lost my job, but it was also a silver lining because not only did I lose my job, but it freed time for me to still uh, search some of these dreams and aspirations I've been putting on the back burner because uh, I got to get up and go to work in the morning. I don't have time to sit and, and do this and do this. So yeah, that, it, it, coronavirus would definitely be a distraction for 2020. Right, right. right. <laughs> uh, Ms. Summer K, thank you for joining us. Are, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Top of the day, everyone. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year to you. Glad to have you. The question that I pose to everyone, and I want to hear your answer, what is one distraction or detour that happened in 2020 that you could think of? Hmm. Very good question. One, I have to be honest. It Are you there? Sight. We didn't hear any of that. You just came back in. Now, you know, I'm going to tell you all something. I was on a virtual earlier and there was no problem. <laughs> So, so we, you know, we, we can't see you. Your, your video is not on either. Yes, okay. I, I have that. Okay. Um, there was not just one for me. There was a number of occurrences or I, as you described them, distractions that evolved from the one major flux that sudden flux, as I heard many mention, was the uh, COVID, the corona. It disassembled our meeting one-to-one. -one. It disconnected that embracing. I, I'm, I'm a hugger. I like to hug people. I like to engage one-on-one, -on -one. so it, mm, I hear the word, <laughs> it severed it. Yeah, that's the best way I can say it. It, it has done that. Um, it has prevented me personally from traveling in the manner that in time I was accustomed though even with what I've gone through in the past five years, certainly has already depreciated that. But now we're talking, I can't even see my grandson, <laughs> except through virtual. I can't touch, I can't hug. As I've stated before, my eldest is an essential worker, a nurse. So it 
there's a lot that has evolved because of the sudden influx. And yet, out of any distraction, I would say turn into a determination. I would say that which was meant for evil, for some of us, not yet everybody still, it will provoke you to see the good out of it. There's good in it. Uh, anything that God allows, if it's no more than to provoke us to get on our knees more, if it's to do just what your um, one of your appetites, uh, I would say that Lady Kaya said that the church has left the building. And I do believe Miss Brittany indicated about that we are the church. So what are we the church now doing where we supposed to always been outside the building, <laughs> outside the tabernacle, outside the sanctuary? Um, it has hindered me greatly. Um, December, I had a lot of death. I often tell people I smile a lot, but don't let the smile fool you. You've got to hear from God when it comes to me because I can smile right through much. So it's a lot. Um, and so I've not been able to attend any funerals. And my farewells have been memories. And I thank God for memories. I, I, I thank God for the have the mind to remember. Thank God for that. So in that, I can't say that there was just one. Uh, I, I do believe because of the in, sudden influx, it promulgated many things. But out of it, there is good. And um, the good I see is what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> uh, the, the, the beautiful faces. And, and I'm a little excited. I'm going to deviate just one second. I'm going to come right back to the table. But um, uh, Mother Lows, I see that you're quite prompt and uh, well visible to us. <laughs> so that means uh, you have learned to maneuver this computer. <laughs> and that's good to see. That, that's good to see um, as well. But nonetheless, yes, uh, I believe there's determination that will come out of this, despite the distractions. It's been good for us. It has. It has been good for us. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. You all that are just joining, uh, Summer Payne and Alice and Gabriel, welcome. Our topic for tonight is avoiding distractions and detours in 2021. And I was just asking the individuals that were on here, um, what were some of the distractions or detours that you can think of that happened in 2020? Don't want to dwell on 2020 too much. We've kind of been through it, but uh, people mentioned the virus. We mentioned the changes in the schools. I would say the uh, political arena with the election and everything going on. There's a lot in the news. Um, there's a lot going on on social media as well. The quarantine um, made a, a lot of changes with us and even something that we tend to look over the implementation of 5G. People don't uh, don't talk about that, but when they implemented this 5G, that caused more radiation to be in the atmosphere. And we don't realize that that affects all of us uh, because with all of the radiation in the atmosphere, that's a mind altering thing. You know, that's an internal altering thing. So if you got all this radiation that's just out in the air and you're just walking to the store or coming out of your house, there, there are some things that are going on. You know, so there, there were definitely a lot of distractions uh, in 2020. My next question, could some of these things, uh, it, these things that I mentioned, as well as the things that happened in your life, could some of these things have been distracted, have been avoided in 2020? Could some of them be, have, have been avoided? I'm reading a book called Destiny, Step Into Your Purpose by T.D. Jakes. And one of the first things that stuck out to me, he asked the question, could it be that we allow the conditions in our lives 
to distract us from the meaning of our lives. And that, that really stuck out to me. A lot of times we just get hung up on the things that happen. Yeah, bad things happen. Some things we, we can't control, some we can, but definitely know before you even place it, before I was placed here, all of this stuff was, um, was already predestined before the foundation of the earth. Before you were a seed uh, that, that was in your father, God had already planned your blueprint out. You know, he knew that we would be in this pandemic during this year. He knew it would be a year for people to sit down, but could some of these things have been avoided? I believe they could. Any, did anyone think that they couldn't? Some of the things that we've dealt with this year could not have been avoided. Anybody? No, no, no one has anything. <laughs> no, some of these things could have been avoided, some could not. Sometimes what I realize is the things that distract us, we have to pull away from those things. Um, I know a lot of times we look at, we're on social media all the time, for instance, that that thing is it, so much going on on social media. Everybody's putting everything up, everything about this, that, and the other. Sometimes we have to fast from those things because they're a distraction. So that's what I mean by yet yeah, things can be avoided because we don't have to go in everything that comes around. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, we, we don't have yeah. to partake, we don't have to partake in everything um that, that happens uh in in the world, you know, um, or just just out out and about. I have a few points and I'm gonna uh, open up for uh, other people to say something as well. Um, the first thing, avoiding distractions and detours in, in 2021, and this is not all, these are just a few that uh, came to me. Have a visible plan. I know a lot of people use January, some February as well, but use the beginning of the year to make plans, to um, go forth with, okay, I'm gonna map out you know, what happens uh, this year. Now, things may not go the way that you have it you know, uh, written down because God always will come up, he'll show up, he'll shift some things around, he'll give you, um, you know, A, B, C, or D. He gives you something that you didn't have, and it may cause your plans to alter a little bit. But one thing we have to do is make a plan. In Habakkuk 2 and 2, it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Everybody know that because we quoted a lot. Make it plain upon tables. My interpretation of that, write it down on some paper so you can see it, that he may run that readeth it. So when you read it, then it, it wakes up something inside of you because now I have something to work towards. <clears throat> Excuse me. We shouldn't, you know, just be getting up going to, and I've said it in the past, just going to work every day because if you don't have a goal in sight, all you will ever do is just work, you know. Um, but we have to have a plan, and our plan is going to lead us to our destiny. Now, I have something for you. A lot of people say, well, I don't think I've uh, arrived at my destiny. I don't really know what it is. I don't know what my purpose is. But the thing about it is, I'm going to give you a hint and you have to figure the rest of it out. Your purpose is going to be connected to people. You were, we were placed here to impact somebody's life. Um, so, so think about the things that are inside of you, what you're doing, you know, um, the, the people that you're touching. You're supposed to be doing something. You're not just supposed to be getting up, going to um, cook fries every day. Now, if you if cooking fries is, is the thing that you're supposed to be doing, you have to look around you. You have to look a little deeper and see, while I'm cooking these fries, who's around me uh, that I'm supposed to be impacting? Who am I supposed to be pouring into? Or who's supposed to be pouring into me? Because it's not all about us putting into people. You know, it's, it's sometimes about us just being positioned in the right place so that people can pour into us because someone has a piece of your blueprint. Someone has a piece, piece of your destiny. And, and you have to be humble enough to be able to receive that. You know, we can't feel like we've arrived and we have everything. I don't care how many books you read or how much uh, education you have, how many PhDs you have, that doesn't matter. You know, those things are to enhance what God has already placed inside of you. But we all have something inside of us. And it's our job going through life to uh, pull those things that we're supposed to empty ourselves through life. My next thing, take time to read and research. Use the free and available uh, resources. 
a lot of times us as, and I can say it on here, us as African-Americans, we do not like to read. We won't read, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's, that's bad. Uh, sometimes all we do is read um, one thing. You, you find a lot of people in church, all they read is the Bible. That's good. That's good. Hey, everything and every answer that we need is in the word of God. But you have to broaden your horizon and expand your mindsets by taking on some new information. You know, that there are things that and testimonies and experiences that people others have gone through. And some of those things are things that we're going through as well. You know, so if someone has already gone through what you're going through, why would you try to reinvent the wheel? You know, see what they did because maybe their experience is something that can help you avoid a, a detour. You know, may, maybe their experience is, is something that it can map it out and help you to avoid that distraction that's in the way because there is plenty of them. There, there are plenty of distractions. They're, they're all around us. When you step out your door every day, it's so much going on. We have this um, it's the app, and I know some of you all have heard about it. It's called Next Door, and uh, our neighborhood has a, a group on there, and I was just reading some of the posts that they were putting from the new year, and, and we're all grown now, but some people, they were talking about how um, they, they were actually upset, and they were saying that when are you all going to grow up? You know, people were actually not shooting fireworks, but they were out here shooting guns. And one lady posted a picture of a shell casing that landed in her daughter's room or somewhere. And she was like, now I have to sit here and comfort my kids. Thank God that the bullets didn't hit them, but these people are just shooting up in the air. You know, so there are distractions. There are all kinds of things around us every day. And we have to make sure that we're putting on the whole arm of God and being cautious as well, you know, make sure that we're doing the right thing. And even in those cases where this child was, wasn't doing anything, sometimes things just happen, you know? So we definitely have to make sure that we stay prayed up and and uh keep moving forward but going back to what i was talking about reading and researching make sure that you're picking up a book and reading it that's one of my goals you know to to get a book i have to enlighten myself because people are not just walking around giving free information out nowadays you're not gonna meet anybody in walmart and they say well hey let me tell you about the stock market uh let, let me tell you what's going on let me give you the best stocks to pick you know or let, let me teach you about business ethic people don't just walk around giving free information so it's important to us to read someone said well i don't know what to read well what are the things inside of you that you want to grow what are the things you want to enhance that you you don't have the full knowledge of grab a book about it. if you have an issue with loving people it's a book out there by love along with the bible you know if, if you have an issue with you, you're trying to start a, a business you don't know where to begin there's all kinds of help and i think um it's a group called score as well and what score does they, they have retired entrepreneurs and different things different people that will help you on your journey and it's free all you have to do is just set the appointment and connect with them so it's so many resources and then like i was saying uh, earlier on social media if you want to do something someone is doing it already or someone has done it someone is an expert at what you're trying to trying to do so all you have to do is connect with them you know you all you have to do is reach out to them or follow the pattern that they're setting see where they're hanging out and see what types of clubs they're connected to my, my next point comes from Bishop Bronner I like a lot of his wisdom that he gives anyone have anything any questions any comments that they want to throw in right there? I definitely don't want to be the only one talking. Did someone unmute? Okay, I'm gonna go forward. My next thing is from Bishop Bishop Dale Bonner. He says, never confuse those who are attached to you with those who are assigned to you. And I was like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. He said, because uh, the ones that matter to you are concerned about your eternal uh, destiny. The ones that can speak to into your life the one, are the ones that will bless your life. So he said a lot of times people are attached to you, but those are leeches. And those leeches are there only to suck the information out of you, suck the energy out of you, suck the potential out of you. You know, they're going to be there because maybe they're trying to accomplish the same thing. 
and they need the information. Instead of them saying, well, hey, I'm trying to do this. Will you help me? They just say, you know what? Let me stay close enough so I can get what I need to. I'm going to do everything that they want me to do. And, and I'm going to get them to a vulnerable place where they can pour into me. You know, so they do it in a greed type way. And we have to make sure that we are very conscious of those around us because I've learned that the people around you a lot of times can be the distractions and the detours as well you know um so we have i have to make sure that along my journey through 2021 that i am watching my surroundings i am looking at each and every person that's in my my circle that's in my group you know and, and make sure not just here but everybody that i'm connected with and that we're connected with and make sure that these people are connected to my destiny you know sometimes it takes for us we, we we're talkers we like to talk sometimes it takes for us just to be quiet and sit back and listen Listen up there because people are going to tell you who they are. They're going to show you who they are. So make sure that you know who's attached to you and who's assigned to you. I don't have much. I'm, I'm ready to hear what uh, you all have to say. Regardless, number four, regardless of what comes your way, stay focused on your God-given vision. We all have a vision. Take the test that comes, learn from them, grow from them, and stay on course. I hear my mom say a lot of times, she's told a few of my friends this as well, don't let nobody derail your train. She said, and one of my friends we used to talk to all the time, and she uh, she would tell ask the girl, is your train still on the track? You, did you make sure all wheels are still on the track? And that's one thing that we have to do, make sure that we don't let people, which are distractions, come into our lives to derail us. Because that some people are sent to do that. You know, the devil is trying to win souls. He's trying to do everything he can do because he don't want us to belong to, to, the, to Christ. You know, so we have to make sure that we know who is sent and what they're sent for. So if I have my purpose and my destiny in mind, I know what I'm reaching for. I'm actually taking time to work this uh, goal and this dream and a vision, break it down and make sure that I can understand the end. That, I, that takes a lot of energy and time. I don't know if you know about that. I was telling somebody I written my goals down, but once you write your goals down, you have to break those goals down individually because there are so many little sub particles that belong to those goals. So if you want to own a car lot, then hey, you, that's the big goal. Look at all of the small things that go under there that say, this is what you got to do to own that car lot. You got to do A, B, C, D. But if you've already been working in this area, then there are some behind the scenes stuff that you already have. All you have to do is sit down and write them down. Sometimes just go and ask questions. Well, how do you all order your cards? Where do you get them from? Or, you know, who are you connected with? You, you're building your database. You're building your information that's going to help you with your on your journey. And that's why God connect us with certain people because these people have what we need. You know, they, they and they may not even know that they have the part of our blueprint, but you will know it when you hear it. Um, the last thing that I have, and I'm going to open the floor, be okay with being uncomfortable. And I think we mentioned that in a few Zooms uh, meetings ago. Be okay with being uncomfortable in 2021. Our human nature compels us to seek more because there is a place called destiny where fulfillment lies. So if you find yourself getting a job and the job is okay in the beginning because you learn something new. You don't really, you know, know the, the job or the responsibilities. But once you learn that, then you feel like this is not it. You don't feel settled in your spirit. That means that God, you, you understand our instincts inside of us were already pre-wired. God pre-wired us to, to produce, you know, something greater. So when you get to that place, then we have to understand that I need to find out what this greater is. It, it's got to be something else. Again, like I was saying, we're not designed just to work job. There's something greater that, and which is going to help me to reach my destiny, but I have to search for that. Uh, anyone got anything they want to insert right there? Miss uh, Alice, Miss Brittany, Miss Summer Cake, Gabriel, Summer Payne, anybody? I go. I have something there. Uh, we've been having a um, family Bible study the past 
couple of weeks. And uh, right now it's, it's based off of 52 weeks. And it says it's a Bible study for women, but all of us do it. Like my mom and Edwin and myself and my mother-in-law will be joining us too. But this week we're reading about Moses in the Bible. And so in Exodus, and when I looked at it, I was like, okay, I, I think we can all resonate with Moses sometimes where, you know, Moses was like, you know, I have a, a speaking problem. I can't do this. And God told him what he wanted him to do. And he was doubting himself. And so that's one of the things, like when I read that, I was like, you know what? Look at what God has put in into my mind and into my plan. Like years ago, I knew that I needed to do this particular thing. And I kept saying, uh, I can't do this. Or, uh, you know, I was kind of self-conscious because of the way that I looked and people are, um, you know, if you're a plus size, fat, whatever you want to say, you know, people will look at you a certain type of way. And I was like, well, how can I get in front of all these people? And then I got blessed with a job where I had to do the exact same thing. But this past year, 2020 kind of took me for a loop because my confidence was tested. And I was like, you know, I can do this. And I just felt that it was always constantly like, like hurdles that was in my way for doing different things. And I was like, I know I can push through this. I know what God has for me because I would have dreams about it. And so like I'm, I'm this year, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to press to it and do what I need to do to be the best Brittany that I can be. But I kind of resonated with like Moses because, you know, God told me I needed to do this. And here I am, you know, doubt myself. I can't do this. People not going to listen to me. What can little old me do in this big old world, you know? So I'm just trying to, to be a little bit, have more self-confidence in myself and in my abilities because I do. My husband tells me all the time, you shortchange yourself, and I do. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do better this year, I guess. <laughs> Indeed. The first thing I was uh, telling him when, uh, when I said hey to him um, it's power. There's power in the tongue, and the word of God says that. So whatever we speak into our atmosphere is what's going to happen. So I think one thing we have to do is change our verbiage. You know, we're going to a new year. What do you want God to do for you? Start speaking into your atmosphere. Start prophesying into your own life. This is what's going to take place this year. I'm going to accomplish this. You know, I'm going to work towards this. I will be the leader over this. And if there are things that that you can control, then, hey, start making adjustments with those. Because we look at having a healthier life, we all can make adjustments to that, you know. Uh, it's, it's up to us, especially if you got equipment in the house, it's up to you whether you want to get on that treadmill or that bike or not, or if you want to sit on that couch. You got two different options, you know. There's going to be two different outcomes for everything that you do. So that's the thing that you have to wait way out. And I look at those things where we have to make those decisions. For me, those are crossroads in life. And what the crossroads do, it, it takes me back to um, the children of Israel wandering around that mountain for 40 years. You know, they continue to do the same thing over and over again. Same as us. I'm going to work out. I said that today. I was telling my nephew, I'm going to go in there and get on that treadmill. I got it in my mind. I ain't made it yet, but I'm determined. <laughs> After we get off of here, I'm going to do it. But it's, it's something that we have to make up our mind. If you want different results, if I want my 2021 beach body, I got to get busy now. I can't wait to June when summer come in and say, well, I'm going to get busy now. No, I got to work on my six pack now. <laughs> <Look at Alan. laughs> but no, uh, honestly, without the why, a lot of people don't understand their true why. Why are you here? You know, uh, why am I existing? Without the true why, you can never connect to the purpose. Through purpose, you connect to your destiny. So first off, we have to understand our why. You know, why, why am I doing what I do? You know, why, why do I get up every morning? For me, I understand that when I don't have a goal right in, in my, the forefront of my mind, then I, I'm just kind of going through the motion and I find myself getting back on the on the um, hamster wheel, you know, and, and meaning that I'm just doing things repetitious. I don't have a goal and so I don't have anything to accomplish. But when I have that thing to accomplish, 
at the front of my four, uh, uh, front of my mind, then it, it's the thing that pushes me. It's the thing that drives me to truly understand why I'm doing it. But then I realized too, once I accomplished that goal, maybe a short term goal, short term goal. Once I accomplish that goal, I have to sit down and go back and, and take the next goal and put it at the forefront of, of my mind. I can't continue going on for it because I get lost in the shuffle. You know, and that's for me. And I, I think a lot of us have to, you know, sit down, take time with ourselves, separate from everything. You heard me say before, elevation requires separation. So I got to separate from everything because I don't want to, even with all of the stuff going on, you say we in a pandemic, what if they close your city down again and the kids go back to complete virtual learning? Still, even with all of that stuff going on, we can't get caught up in the shuffle of, of these distractions. You know, uh, with some of those, yeah, it's happening, but even in the private of your own home, you can still be on your computer working your vision. You can still be moving in your purpose. It's a powerful life transition to unleash what lies inside of you. Your purpose is inside, but that unleashing only becomes viable when it can be validated by the why. So you have to understand, or we have to understand, why am I doing this? That's something that we can be, you know, working on right now. Anyone else? Miss Alice, you want to Come on in. Oh, yes. Song, okay. Yes, ma'am. Happy ahead. New Year to everyone. I pray everyone is, is well. So just a, a couple of things and I'll get out your way. Number one is the word, well, the prefix D-I-S, if you take your take yourself back to English um class, that prefix means not or none. So whenever you see this in front of a word, it's funny because I was thinking when Kai was talking, I grew up, it's like, don't diss me. And so when people said you like, what they actually talking about when it was said, but this means to speak negative of. So whenever you put this in front of another word, it changes the word, right? And so when you begin to think about it, words like dislike, disloyal, dishonest, disease, um, disappear, disagree, it changes the root word when you put this in front of it. The same thing in our life, what are you putting in front of your life that's changing what the root word is in your life. Because that's really important. Number one, you need to know what the root is and knowing when you put this in front of someone, when you begin to doubt, when you begin to question, that can sometimes cause what was originally ten intended to actually change because actually the word traction means to grip. That's the definition of the word traction. And you, when you put this in front of it, it means something that causes you to lose traction. And if any of you've ever driven vehicles, I know all y'all probably got some, you know, top of the line vehicles. But when I was, when I got my first vehicle, listen, God was, he listened, the Holy Spirit held that thing up all the way, okay? But in times of especially, <laughs> it, I'm talking about my angels was working. I know my angels for sure got some, some bruises, real talk. But one thing about when like, we was driving sometimes, especially if you've ever driven and listen, it's not the best thing to do, but when your tires begin to unravel, that ain't a good thing, okay? It's, hear me tell you, it's very, very dangerous. But with that being actually said, and the reason it is, and actually you take your vehicle to a tire shop to get a rotator balance, they will tell you how much, if you will, quote unquote, meat you stick on your tire. That tells them how good the traction is on your on your tires and so when your tires begin to lose traction traction normally can possibly lead to if you will um accident okay and so with that being said when you don't have traction it can cause access and cause your vehicle to hydroplane it could cause a lot of other things to take place but also on the flip side of that it can be negative like what have what has a grip on you is a good question to ask yourself when it comes to traction, when you think about traction, like what grips me, what holds me, what has a hold on me? And when you put this in front of it, this actually takes away that whole word traction, okay? That's one thing that I want to say. Another thing, as believers in Christ, the Bible refers to us as sheep, okay? So if we're sheep, if you know anything about sheep, unfortunately, sheep, they, they're not the smartest animal at all, okay? Not at all. Sheeps were made to be dependent. God created them that way. 
And so with that being said for you and I, so therefore if he made us to be that way, then we also know that who are we to depend on? And that's him. So whatever it is that you need in life, he literally has made it where you depend on him and we know he are, he's our shepherd. The problem is a lot of us don't recognize we sheep. And so because you don't recognize you sheep, you don't recognize that you need a shepherd because every sheep needs a shepherd, right? And so it's really important, number one, to know that number two, and every shepherd and every sheep has a shepherd and not every shepherd is a good shepherd, right? And so like back in the Bible days, when the, um, when the shepherds, like all the sheep would be in like one little pen together or whatever, like at nighttime. And so in the morning time, when the shepherd would go and get um, their sheep, they would call for their sheep and their sheep would come to that shepherd. Not all the sheep would come. The question is, but do you know your shepherd's voice? And so when you know your shepherd, and the Bible says in a stranger's voice, we will not follow. The reality is when it comes to that, we're, we're all following something. And so it's to ask yourself, what am I following? Because what you're following can often lead to distraction, right? As a matter of fact, Dr. Tony Evans has a book on detours that I would recommend if you haven't read it. It's a really great um, read as well. But just actually knowing that and realizing apart from Christ, our life is hopeless. And as a sheep, as a matter of fact, most other animals, if you left them in the wild, they scrappy enough to survive. Sheep are not made that way. Sheep will get eaten up every time and guess what? It was created that way for us to make sure we stay with the shepherd because the shepherd goes before the sheep, right? And we know the shepherd protects, the shepherd guides, the shepherd watches, nourishes, you know, nurtures, all of those things. And so a part of that is when it comes to us following, I really don't have to worry about what's next because the shepherd already knows. As a sheep, my responsibility is to follow. And even for you, Brittany, I know we've been kind of going back and forth. It's like, I'm not really ready yet you know, to talk and lead the discussion, you know, on the round table, part of that is, is doing like some stuff you don't get until you do it. Some confidence don't come until you're in that place of actually doing it. And sometimes even if it's being fearful, it's still doing it anyhow, you know, right? So, cause part of that, the enemy will, uh, the enemy will use that to tell us that we're not qualified. But at the end of the day, I don't qualify myself. The one who called me qualifies me. So that's why I'm qualified because he says, who I call, I qualify. So if I've called you, I have already qualified you and everything that you need is already inside you. Another great thing about sheep is they travel in flocks. And us, and when you stick together with the flock, it's really difficult for the enemy to come in and really get a hold of you. But when you separate yourself from it, right? And one of the ways we can separate ourselves from the flock is in our mind. You might be amongst people, but in your mind, you're separated. And that's where the enemy can begin to, if you will, attack us. As a matter of fact, one of the number one predators of sheep is um, a domestic dog. Interesting, but all the dog does to the sheep is chase them to the point of exhaustion to make them abort their lambs. That's really all the enemy does. If I can get you so distracted on other things to cause you to be exhausted, I can get you to abort the plans that God has for you. I can get you to avoid the assignment God has for you just through exhaustion. And some of us have become exhausted off of distraction, meaningless things, right? Most things that are distractions are meaningless. So ask yourself, what in my life has no value? Because if things have no value, but you give it a lot of time, that is a distraction, right? And so part of that is really knowing like what in my life and Ecclesiastes talk a lot about, Solomon says, this was meaningless, this was meaningless. And we know we can go on and on talking about those things and even realizing as I wrap up when Mary and Martha, when Jesus went to go and visit them, right? And, Mar and Martha got upset because Mary wouldn't come in the kitchen, you know, and help her. She's like, oh, so you just gonna let her sit here? You know, and I don't know if Martha was the oldest, but I'm the oldest. So Martha gives me that oldest sister vibe, right? So you ain't gonna make her do nothing? Like you gonna let this girl sit here and y'all just gonna talk? While the dishes need to be washed, these grits need to be stirred, this flow need to be vacuumed, this bathroom need to be cleaned. And she's sitting up here like ain't nothing to do, right? Like that's how I feel like I'm with you, Martha, right? Like she got a whole attitude, right? When she calls, and so when, but when she goes and she tells Jesus, mind you, you ain't gonna make her help me. And I'm thinking, how many times have I approached Jesus like Martha, telling him what he gonna do? Like you not gonna make her? Like, how can I tell Jesus? But anyway, they had that kind of relationship too because he often went to their house. The Bible just depicted that scripture to let us know, to point out something. So check it. When he talked to Martha, he called her by her name twice. 
And I don't know about you, but growing up for me, if your name was called, your whole name was called, guess what? Oh, you better get there. You better get there real quick, like, right? Because it's a problem. So when he calls her name and he tells her, check it. He says, Martha, Martha, he said, you are worried and upset about many things. Now I was tripping because I was like, all she asked for was the girl to come in there and help her cook. But you said many things, which lets me know it was more other things on her mind. And Jesus actually pointed that out. That is really distracting you. It ain't really the fact that this girl is in this kitchen not helping you. That is not what's bothering you. It's something else. And he goes on to tell her, not, not what you're doing is not important, but just Mary has chosen what is better and it won't be taken from her. So as I conclude, I want to say this, whenever Jesus is in your midst, everything else is meaningless. Everything else is useless. Nothing else really should matter when he's present. I think that that was a message he was trying to get her to get that. The, the devil would have stretched you. Hear me tell you, yes, you need to do housework, but housework should never take um, priority over your devotion. Yes, you need to, you know, maybe go and... Um, do work for your job, but that should never take time over you praying to the Lord. Like all of those things should never trump spending time with him because all of those things you can get back. You can never get back those moments being in his presence because the devil knows in his presence, the Bible tells us it's fullness of joy. If the devil can keep us out of his presence, he can keep us from getting joy. So it's a lot of things that the enemy will use and to distract us from what God wants from us. And some of it will make you uncomfortable, hear me tell you, but not all distractions are bad either. It is some good distractions, right? Because there's some negative things that have grip on us that we need to have a good distraction to help us maneuver through those things. So I just want to encourage everyone, include myself as I'm talking, you know, to be aware because it's not the big things that trip us up in life. It's normally the small things. It's the five minutes that you think didn't really matter. But that changed your whole day. Like for me, I can say, I'm going to get on social media right quick and I'm going to get off. I look up, it's an hour later. And so where I thought it was five minutes turned in because you already know a notification going to pop up, right? And to me, that ain't nothing but the devil. I, ain't, I kid you. <laughs> Listen to me. And that's the reason why I normally don't read my Bible on my phone. Because the moment I promise, like I won't get no notifications as long as they ain't on my Bible app. The moment I pull that Bible app open, the moment I hit Matthew, whatever, seven, I be like, what? Oh, somebody text me? Oh, somebody, let me see what they talk. And look, before I know it, I don't left Matthew seven. I don't know nothing of the, what the Lord was trying to tell me that day because I done got so caught up. And so part of that is knowing that notifications, looking at what your notifications are, what are you answering to? And some notifications need to be turned off because not all notifications are of the Lord, but on the flip side, is God sending you notifications? And because you don't notifications, at least on my phone, I can swipe up and, and act like I don't see them. So when God is calling us, do we swipe up and act like we don't hear him calling us? Do we act like we, we you know, oh, well, oh, no, you must not mean me. You know, you know, I meant you. Like, I didn't mess up. Like, people mess up. I don't mess up. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, he knows what he is doing and we do not. So as sheep, it is our responsibility to depend on the shepherd because the shepherd knows where we shall go. And if we continue to follow the shepherd, everything that we need is in Christ. Everything he has called and created us to be, you get that when you are following him. And so part of it is, and so yes, yeah, sometimes you don't even know where you're going, but guess what? Go anyway. You don't even know what you're doing, but do it anyway. You don't even know what you're supposed to say, but say it anyway. So it's, it's some, so at some point, we just got to get it anyway in our spirit. You know, there's some, I, sometimes I don't feel like praising, but I praise him anyway. Sometimes I don't feel like working, but I work anyway. You know, sometimes, let me tell you, I'm going through a situation in my church right now. Y'all really, please keep in your prayers. And I'm going to tell you, I do not want to be nice to this individual. And I was like, you know what? And I was so worked up today because I was like, and I know he, he's done some evil things. And I'm like, and you want me to be nice? I'm like, that whole, I don't know what the Lord was on. He's talking about love your enemies. Like, I'm like, dude, like, what was you thinking about when you put that in the Bible? Like, real talk. But nonetheless, nonetheless you know, pray for those that despitefully misuse you. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. And hear me tell you, all of those scriptures are there for a reason because he know we're going to encounter people like that. And yeah, I know it. And it sounded cute when I knew it, but it's another thing to live the scripture you're reading about. 
And it, it hits a whole lot different. And so right through here, I don't want to be nice, but I have to tell myself, you're going to be nice anyhow. I really don't want to be respectful. Like I really want to give dude the what for, but guess what? He was like, no, you're not. You're going to be respectful anyhow, because if I'm your shepherd and you're my sheep, you follow my direction. And if my direction is to do this, you're going to do it, whether you like it or not. And so of course, huh? You win. Like I can't fight. Like who can fight with Jesus? Like really? Like I lose every time. So I'm like, mm, okay. I kind of go in the corner and suck for a minute. But then I come back out and I'm like, okay, you win. I get it. <laughs> you know, because at the end of the day, you know what's best. And, and really, for real, this is the last thing. When Kaya was saying, speak it into existence, May will be 20 years I have been out of college. Oh my goodness, this year will be 20 years. But when I was in, um, in school at Graham, I was in a National Honor Society. I was inducted in one year and the, and the person that was up there, the president was up there giving a speech. I didn't know really anything about this honor society. I'm like, oh, okay, like I'm kind of borderline genius. Like, yes, Albert Einstein called me. That's me. I'm that girl. But anyway, so they had me in this honor society. I'm like, oh, okay, like I'm doing it. Right. And so I saw her up there and she was talking. I turned to my mom. I don't even, I'm telling you, I really know what I was talking about. I told my mama, I say, I'm going to be the president next year. Yeah, I was just talking. I promise you, I really was. When I tell you I was the president next year, you really do have what you say. So if you want it, that's the power is in your tongue. Whatever you want to see manifest, speak it. Whatever it is, if you want to see 60 pounds gone, you speak that. You got to see that thing before you see that thing. Whatever it is, if you want to be debt free, you got to see that thing before you see that thing. If it's a relationship, whatever it is, you got to see it before you see it. That's what we call faith. You know, right? So begin to speak those things that you want and assign them right? Give your angels work to do. And God says, my word cannot return to me void. He says, anything that you ask, if it lines up with my will. And the Bible says, every perfect and good gift comes from above. So if you ask me, guess what I'm going to do? If it lines up, you get it. So the reality is we don't even really got, um, a, we got a, we got an asking problem. It's not that God won't give it to us. We just ain't asking yet. So I would encourage everybody in 2021 to start asking. God and see what he'll do. Appreciate you, Kaya. And no, ma'am, we thank you. We appreciate you for those nuggets dropped. Uh, that, that's definitely good. And in, in my industry, we call that envisioning. And envisioning is seeing the big picture before you even start. So they tell us, visualize what the haircut is going to look like when you finish. Before you even pick up your clippers, you know, get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. And I think the things in our life, even the goals that we're looking to accomplish in 2021, see it manifested already. You know, see it unfolded already. You may not have every detail to get there, but see you know, uh, see that big thing. And that'll be the thing that help you stay focused and keep pushing you to where you're going. Yeah, anyone else? I enjoyed that, Miss Alice. Anyone else? Uh, no, ma'am, we can't hear you. You got to unmute. How about that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good evening to everybody. Um, I just enjoy listening to you, Alice and Summer, everybody, everybody, all these nuggets y'all dropping, you know, you don't get too old to learn. And I have an open mind. I will hear what anybody is saying. And it's left up to me to uh, rake in what I can use. And if I can't use it, I shovel it out. We know that uh, all of last year, like you said, it was so many things that happened. Um, a whole lot of distraction and it's, it's the more things are going to happen. It's just like you going down the interstate and, and there are many off ramps. So, you know, we have to keep in our forefront, listen, do I recognize this thing that, that I just passed? Because Satan doesn't, he's the same all over the world. He just has a different face for you. He's not going anywhere. He is there to distract you. That's his job. He's there to rob, steal, and to destroy if he can. We have, you know, one of our problems is we don't, a lot of people don't know God's voice. A lot of people 
if you they read the Bible, you got to study the Bible and meditate on it and know his voice, know what his word, his whatever his word says, that's his voice. So we have to make sure that we don't go back and do the same thing this year that we did last year. Know what you are finna step off into. It's good to investigate. Satan is nothing but a counterfeiter. He ain't nothing, look at him, all this camouflage that he's wearing, he is doing that to deceive you, to make you think that you're going to, you're making the right decision. But like you say, uh, uh, a sheep in wolf clothing, he's a wolf all the time. You've got to know him. That's why you have to know God. you got to have his spirit in you because he will lead you and guide you and God ain't going to lead you wrong. So a lot of these off ramps that we have paid that we passed last year, we got to make sure that if we see them again and you will see them again, because Satan is always there. He, you know, he just goes on the outskirt in the darkness. When you call Jesus name, he got to back up in the back in the darkness from where he came from. You got to know that he's there. He's not going to leave you alone, especially if you're doing uh, God's business, especially if you are a child of God. You got to know what spirit is coming to you. So a lot of these off ramp, we've got a vision in mind and we're going toward it. You've got to bypass a lot of these off ramps. This ex is say, well, it's a it's a big old um, red velvet cake on this on, on, on this exit. Uh, it might be a hallelujah. This is what we I had on my table. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, some good old dressing and stuff on this ramp and all it. Well, you, we know we don't need that. I'm overweight right now. My doctor is all up in my face talking junk. Now, we've got to bypass that. We, The Bible said what? Rebuke the devil and he will flee. So we've got to know God's voice. We've got to know, say, well, he's a tempter. And you know our flesh want to be tempted. Do you know that? Do you know that your flesh will never, ever be saved? So we have to bring our minds into subjection to the word. And if your mind is in the will of God, then your mind tells your body that, no, you're not going to do that. We're going to do right. You have to make up in your mind. You got to make sure that you don't. we don't let Satan trip us up this year. Like it, maybe if like he did last year, because he's always there. He's always got a fiery doctor throw at you, but you got to know that that's him. And we have control. Like somebody said, look here, power, how you said, the uh, power is in my tongue. It's whatever I say. In my lifetime, I used to down myself a lot, you know, to other folks, you know, well, you know, I, I don't have this right. I can't do this. You got to stop that. You got to put some positive stuff in the atmosphere around you. I am a conqueror. I am an overcomer. You've got to put your, put that in your mind and speak it out. And like she said, charge those angels that God has encamped around about us. We got to charge those angels to do what we need to be done. There's a lot of things that we don't, we can't do. God know we can't do it. But he said, I'm here. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. All you got to do, he said, he said, ask. He didn't say beg either, did he? He said, ask what you will. And you can get so close to God till you can command God to do what you want here. He said, I give you even the very desires of your heart. So we've got to put in our spirit and walk in the spirit of God for, 19, for 2021 that I am an overcomer. And I will. I will do what God wants me to do. And look here, and some of the things that I want to do, but God first. Amen. I'm about to preach up in here. Look this here. Thank you. Listen, <laughs> Thank babe, you. I can just say one thing. Listen, mama done made this, this good gravy. I can't let this biscuit go to waste. Let me <laughs> tell you like this. Come on, Real come good. on with it. Come on with it. Like, like in my spirit, she reminded me of the situation that I'm dealing with at church. And so we're doing this challenge. We're doing a Psalms challenge. Um, I challenge the young adults for the next five months, we're gonna read a Psalms a day. Like right, it's 150 Psalms, so we're gonna do that. So anyway, today's Psalms one. And so I begin to read Psalms one. I've read Psalms one many times, but today when I read it, it just hit different. 
And then the, the, the first one it says, you know what? Meditate on the Lord's instruction. Mm-hmm. And I kept like, I was like, Alice, you're meditating on what they're doing to you. You're not meditating on the word of God. Come then on. the Holy Spirit. Spirit that show you how scripture lines up with scripture. He took me to Psalms 37. And in mm-hmm. Psalms 37, the version that I have, it says, do not be agitated by evil doers. Mm-hmm. That is the instruction of the Lord. So mm-hmm. if I meditate on God's instructions not to let evil doers agitate me, instead of meditating on the evil doer, look at what the Lord would do. For me and when mom was saying that too a lot in my life i have apologized to people for the assignment that god has given me for the anointing that is on my life and when i hear me tell you i add more to it before i take it back because i'm not apologizing because i didn't give it to me he gave it to me and when you can walk in that bonus it's not alice's bonus that i'm walking in when i boast i boast in christ whatever you see whatever i am it is all whoever i will become it is because of him and i will never let anyone make me feel inferior for what god has assigned me to do because he's given all of us a great work to do and whatever that looks like for you but i refuse to back down and cower down because the enemy wants us to sit up and say well you know he wants us to act like anything that we are sheep but God don't want us to act cheapest when it comes to doing what he's called us to do. He wants us to be bold because we know he is the lion and the lamb, right? Most people love the lamb of God, but they don't love the lion in him. All of us, if we belong to him, guess what? You might like the lamb in me, but don't ever wake up the lion because when you wake up that lion, oh yes, mm-hmm. right? He's the lamb of God and the lion of Judah. Both of them live inside of us as well. And we need to activate both of them in our life. When you need to have courage, that's the lion that you need. For me, when I need gentleness, that's the lamb that I need. So it's knowing which one you need in what situation. And the last thing that mom said when she was saying about always being able to, um, sorry y'all, here is, is because um, when she says, I never get to over learn. Because we know the Bible says he or she that has an ear, let him hear. And so that tells you when you have an ear, you're supposed to hear the things that the Lord is saying to you and the things that he is saying to other people for you. And so that's the reason when mama, I'm talking about like she had all my insides just clapping and jumping and flipping and twirling and doing, you know, all of that stuff. Because hear me tell you, 2020 is for the taking. 2020 really belongs to those who's going to go after it. 2020 don't belong. And guess what? And it should not. You should not get anything if you ain't going to work for it. Shame on us to sit up here. If I'm not going to go to the gym to lose the weight and somebody else is going, I have no right to say anything because I got the same access as old girl do. But if old girl go and put in the work, old girl deserves to lose those 60 pounds. If Alice want it, Alice got to put in work. The reality is we want something without working for it. And that's not how it works. The Bible says faith without works is dead. If you want it, you got to put some work. You got to put some gravy on that biscuit if you want something to happen for you. All right. Oh, y'all, y'all on fire tonight. That, that's good. You had something else, Mother, before I go for it? I'm, I'm mute. I'm mute. I'm mute your phone. You hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay, uh, she was talking about the lamb and uh, the uh, lion. When Jesus walked the earth, he was the lamb. But when he comes back, he's coming as the lion and he's coming with judgment in his hands. And, our, and everything that we have sown, everything, the Bible said the dotting of every eye and the crossing of every T, everything that we have done, I said, we're going to stand before him and give an account of it. He's coming as the lion when he comes back. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. She was talking about those distractions. And if you've ever talked to Mm -hmm. a person that uh, has been on drugs and alcohol, and these are not the only only things or disorder, but they tell you it takes 21 days to break a habit. 
and it's 21 days to formulate a new habit. So that's one thing I want to encourage each and every person to incur, um, to, to begin starting those new habits in your life. There are things that, that's going to come around. I've been trying to tell someone something, a friend of mine, something that, that has been happening or whatever, just haven't gotten around to it. But let me tell you, the devil's going to bring up those distractions in your life. It, it, it's so many things that come in a distraction. Uh, some of them are to throw you off. Other ones, I mean, and then in that same thing of throwing you out there's something you're supposed to learn god is trying to strengthen us in certain areas you know so that we can go forth but when those distractions come and they come back around again sooner or later you have to recognize they are a distraction and that's here to throw me off so before i even jump into it i'm going to make the choice to do something different you know i'm gonna i'm not even gonna entertain that i'm gonna shoo that to the side or, or brush that off because i'm going in a different direction i'm not gonna be distracted by, because we're all grown now when you get a certain age you know some things are just supposed to come natural you're supposed to be able to identify certain things in your life now we're a little younger in your 20s or even uh before that then you you may miss some of those things because you've never experienced them before. You know, no one's ever talked to you about them before. But once you have been distracted or uh, deterred by one specific thing and that thing comes back around again, it may come in a different color, a different shape, but inside of it is the same distraction. Once it comes around again, you have to start identifying those things, you know, and say, you know what? I choose to, to be different. I choose to uh, try something else, you know, because I want to move forward. And I realize as long as I allow this distraction or this hurdle or this hindrance to, to keep me here, then I'm not growing. I'm not moving forward. So I, I am personally putting myself further away from reaching my destiny or accomplishing my goal. So if I have work to do, I got something to move forward towards, then I have to make that conscious decision right there in that moment of time and say, I'm not going to entertain this person. You know, so I'm going to delete this person. I'm going to cut contact with this person because they are a distraction. Whatever the distraction is in our lives, we can't go through this year uh, with those same distractions. We have to come with something new because you know what? New wine can't go in old bottle. So the thing about it is, is if, if God is trying to give me something new, I can't put it in the, in the new mindset because it's not going to work. I got to shift my mindset so that I can receive what's going forward and so that I can work on the next lesson that uh, I need to learn. Uh, anyone else uh, want to chime in? Summer K, do you have something today? Or Tyree or Edwin, anybody? Well, while they waiting, I got something else to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, just to give them time, because I know they got, I know Miss Summer K just came for me, so I'll let her talk. Go ahead, Miss Summer K. I can tell, tell my part later. Well, I'm changing over systems there, and I did see there was a link broken. Um, indeed, the word lets us know that we can call these things be not as though they were. And at the same time, we're not to be moved by what we see. For all that we do see is subject to change. And it goes further when it lets us know, as I listened to someone today was sharing, that they had contracted the COVID and each day that her friend checked on her, she said she answered the phone by, yes, I'm walking in my healing. That day she had a fever, that day she was coughing. Next couple of days, she, I'm walking in my healing. A little bit more. So I'm okay, we can't hear anything you're saying. You're going out. Death and life you is in the power. In. You just came back in. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. We didn't hear you. You just came back in. Okay. I'm going to go back to my other system over there I was connecting with. I don't know the last thing that you did hear. Um, you were saying that she was... Um, each day that she was walking in her healing was her response. Yes. Each day she walked in her healing. One day you call, she's coughing in a fever. 
Next day you call, her response was the same, I'm walking in my healing. Third, fourth day you call, the fever is broke, she's still coughing, but I'm walking in my healing. Few days down the road, long story cut short, you called, her declaration was with an exclamation mark, I'm walking in my healing, no fever, no coughing, no sore throat, no nothing, because it is death and life is in the power of the tongue. Truly, people switch that word around, but that's not how it's written. It's death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that shall speak it shall eat the fruit thereof. There is much fruit. If we change our words, we can change our world. I heard it said in a speech. Um, and even uh, I heard one of you say about the anyhow, believe it or not, there was a Toastmaster speech done by one of our members entitled Anyhow. <laughs> and not knowing that before the close of that year, she would be dealing with anyhow. And so, yes, it, it's very critical that we amplify the glory of God. That's why I said, though there were distractions of many, of many, and definitely in agreement that this year is still going to be the more because we have not come into alignment with the will of God for each one of our lives. We're walking, we're maybe tapping, like, you know, the little toddler gets up and make a step and you reaching out to them. And then, you know, the closer they get, the further we pull our hand away. But that's what God is doing with us <laughs> here in the earth. He's, he's, he's letting us see the necessity for his grace. This is not, we're not chosen because we made it over to 21. It was his grace that abounded. His grace brought us through. His grace turns it around. You know, it was the grace of the Lord um, because death crosses everybody's threshold. Death will. Death will cross everybody's threshold. None of us are exempt. None of us are exempt from the change that takes place in Ecclesiastics. It's, it's all so for us. And so, yes, as my motto stands since 1990, to God be the glory. And it stands unchanged today. That's why I can easily say when I picked up, encountered some things that I believe Miss Alice were mentioning, facing with, when I challenged those times, I remember being in my backyard and the Spirit of the Lord spoke very calmly. Summer so Kay, you're gone again. Well, until Miss Summer Kay come back, because I know she's gonna come back. Come on, when you come back, I'll be we'll be ready for you, Miss Summer Kay. I was gonna also add that the biggest distraction I have found out in 2020 was not people, it was me. That I wanted it to be other people, but the, the biggest distraction in my life has been my thought life. That is really, in 2020, I have said a lot with my thoughts. And I'm like, Alice, like really, you gotta get that together. And so I can really say like, it's really not the other person, it's really me. So if, if I want to do something, and, I, and of course I want to put it on other people, but I can't. It's at the end of the day, it's, it's me. Like most people say, the biggest enemy, um, enemy is the inner me. And when we can begin to work on that inner me piece, then things begin to change, you know, for us. And so being able to look at too, when Kai was talking um, early about, you know, the distraction and stuff that happens. And part of that is realizing not getting tripped up by the same things, you know, over and over again. Part for me is realizing, you know, what is causing me to get tripped up to begin with? Like, how did I not see that coming? Because like some stuff, you're like, you didn't see that? You'd be like, you should have saw that. And sometimes the reason you don't see it is because you're distracted by distractions. And let me tell you, sometimes conversations, even with people that you love can be distracting. 
You, you got to know that sometimes doing those things that are okay things to do and, and are, are things that God has caused you to do can be distractions when they're not done in his timing. When they're not doing what he says to do them, they can be distractions. And, and so hear me tell you, it's really important for us to know that. Knowing, or am I getting caught up on things and, and filling myself with saying, I'm doing all these things for you only to get before the judgment seat. And he say, I didn't ask you to do that. That's not what I called you to do. You, but Lord, I thought you would have. He said, yeah, you can, you can do all of that. I'm saying, we got scripture to say, you know, they said, we cast our demons in your name. Then we do this in your name. This him. He said, yeah, you did it in my name. But he also said, depart from me because I never knew you. So you can do all those things for Jesus, but do you know Jesus? That's the question. Do you know him? You can go to church, but do you have a relationship with him? You can read your Bible, but do you and him know each other? That's what's important. You can pray, but do you know Jesus is the question. Because all this other stuff, it really don't matter. It's all really distressed. It's really all meaningless. But when you know Christ, that's really what matters. And we can get caught up in doing church. We can get caught up in things that are church-like and miss Christ all together. I was sharing with Kaya, I was listening to something a while back and the, and the father said, you know what? I grew my daughter up in church, but I never grew her up in Christ. And the reality is some of us are really grown and mature when it comes to church. But when it comes to Christ, we're real immature. We don't have a clue. And 2020 exposed that too. People's relationship and what it looked like, because it looked like it was intact as long as we was going to church. And how you doing, blessing, how they pay, but praise the Lord. And you had all that little good Christianese and all that good talk. But when the pandemic hit, it was like, oh, you got to pull from your own well now. And what does that actually look like when you ain't got no water in it? Miss Summer K, you back, honey? Yes, ma'am. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if you have not hid that word in that heart, you will surely send against him, I tell you. So yes, ma'am, it's got to be Jesus, 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 Jesus. Uh, I, I live wholeheartedly on that. And yes, the distractions. I do believe and I stand by that. And, and I think you have solidified uh, they were they were purposeful, despite all that has been. Uh, the Bible tells us, yes, there's nothing new under the sun. But he also says, I believe it's in Lamentations, that I've made all things unto me, even the wicked for the day of evil. And so when I look um, at those type of scriptures, such as you indicated earlier, you know, we're to love our enemies, do good to them that uh, uh I hate us and bless them that curse us and pray for them that despitefully, you know, you'd be like, Jesus, who are you talking to? <laughs> How be ever we are to exemplify Christ, all of this is a partaking of fruit that's in the bowl. It's all a partaking. And yes, this timeline has been so relevant for us, as I said earlier, and I don't know if you were amiss, um, when you were in uh, alluding to uh, a period of things that you're challenged with in which we all go through those experiential things in the walk of Christ is that the one thing is the building of our character. It is the building of us in him. And when we get that place where we empty out the us, it makes room for him. I often tell people, God is not going to come. He, the Bible says he don't dwell in no unclean place. He says our filthy, you know, our rags, our, our righteousness are as filthy as rags. He indicates certain things to let us know we've got a whole large ladder to climb, but we can get there in this mortal body. This mortal body won't dwell in that holy place. How be ever, there must be a decreasing. This is when the D sounds good. There is a decreasing so that he can increase. And in the increase, there is a sacrifice of self, a person, of being. He doesn't come through our meat and potatoes. He don't come through our social medias. He don't come through, as I heard someone said, and I know they use it in a lucid term, but I believe very much, I am paper book saved. <laughs> I love that when I heard it and I, I hang on to it. Yes, I am. I believe in flipping that pages, reading, writing in it, making notes and notes I made way back when I looked at it recently and said, I don't even remember writing that, but okay, God, thank you, Jesus. How be ever, 
even at this time, I must continue to go in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's because this pandemic has really been a push to come nigh unto thee. It's been a push to get all of the, I would say the particles, the blemishes, the spectacles out of us because it's in everybody. Everybody got something that needs to be cleansed so we can draw nigh unto thee. Yes, I'll fulfill the desires of your heart when you do that, which is pleasing unto me. You know, yes, there's death and life in the power of the tongue, but that the first thought usually is, oh God, why me? Oh, now what? What is it? That's that negative. That's that death. But we turn that thing around and begin to speak life. I'm walking in my healing. I'm walking in my healing, as that young lady was sharing. And to hear that, bless me the more. Because when I began to say to the Lord for myself, you showed me that the enemy was going to bring this back. You revealed it and I thank you, but I will not receive it. See, just because something is sent don't mean we have to receive it. We don't have to accept it. We have to let the Lord know this is my stand. This is my stance. I love you, God, because the Bible also says, <laughs> he said, I heal you because I healed you. I'll save you because I saved you. And it's my grace that's going to abound. We didn't make it over because we were chosen to make it over. We made it over because his grace brought us over. We were in the number uncounted. This is the one time that's a yes, Lord. We were in that uncounted number. So grace abound. Grace brought me through. Grace really just set me up to clear the path. So I can now no longer walk after the flesh, but walk after the Holy Spirit. And that means giving of me, giving of all of me. And I just thank God every day that is coming in. God, I thank you. Because there are those who have passed on. My heart goes for many. Uh, my daughter right now is bearing a friend, 34 years old, died of natural causes. It was not COVID. And I thought to myself, now that your age group is walking in this door and it's natural causes, will it wake you up? Will it alarm you? Will it alert you? Will it floor you? Will it get your undivided attention that God is speaking? He's not trying to say anything. He's speaking. Every time they're telling us a death every second now. It was every 30, what is it, every 60 minutes, but now it's a death every almost every 30 seconds to a minute somebody death is crossing their threshold and for some households it's been several people at one time it's grace that has been sufficient it's grace mercy and grace mercy is anew each and every morning loads our day with benefits that's grace grace brought us over and so yes i'm looking at this year i see that there are distractions i see that there are things in the way and yet my eyes are unto the hills in which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. My eyes are toward the Lord. And he knoweth that I've gone through this affliction and through these desolations and through these Gilgals and through these loaded bars. But yet, I was shouting to my Redeemer because he's God. I don't know where that, I just, but thank you, Miss Alice, for the flow. I appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. All of that was was good. I definitely appreciate it. Not going to hold you all. We haven't heard from the fellas this evening. Y'all just letting us ladies talk. Dee and Edwin, do you all have anything to say before we wrap it up? I, I've enjoyed this. Yes. Avoid. yes, sir. We can hear you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Ladies and gents on the line. It's 2021. Last year was 2020. We saw a whole lot of growth in the last year. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things that they didn't get accomplished because they couldn't do much. But it was a lot of things that happened in 2020 that a lot of people going to reflect back on. And it's going to be fun memories. Because a lot of people, whether we want to acknowledge it or not, 
even though they wasn't able to physically go and get be in the presence of the church, or as the people say, in God's presence in church, they were drawn closer to God through the things that they went through. Now, we all got things that, you know what I'm saying, we all suffer from, we battle with. No, we are no different. Um, the, one of the things I have that I battle with a lot of time is distraction. And, you know, I was late. You know what I'm saying? It was very ironic because when I come on, y'all was talking about being distracted and following the voice of the one who calls us. So, you know what I'm saying? For like about five or 10 minutes, I was I was battling. Then I come in and I try to get on when I'm having a little difficulties. So I finally got it. You know what I'm saying? It was just in time. But, um, you know, like my Joanne said and Miss Alice was saying about the lamb and then about the lion. See, the, the lion in us is so natural and so easy to reveal. But it's hard to be that humble lamb and follow the, the voice of your shepherd. You know what I'm saying? So the old battles that we battling within ourselves, it ain't just for us, it's for those that's around us. Because if you look at a lion, a lion ain't got too many animals around it. You know what I'm saying? Because he's feared. And he, he might take the notion to devour anybody at any time. So that lamb, to go from that lion to that lamb, it's a, it's a major transformation that we got to go through. You know what I'm saying? Humbling ourselves and realizing that we're serving someone greater than us and to follow his example is... It's mind blowing because it's so easy to just let them have it, Alice. It's easy. But to control that tongue, hey, the power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. I ain't with less than nine ounces, but can control so much. And you know, so, you know, with the new year, we, we all be saying we be making New Year's resolution. Well, I ain't making no, I don't too much believe in making New Year's resolution. So I just, if I'm gonna do something, I do it and let life continue to go. You know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of people, they feel like if they say it is out of bad, they gonna do it. And two weeks later, it's like, dang, I just lied to myself and to all those people. You know what I'm saying? So why lie to just, tell, hey, you just gonna do what you do. You know, so I'm, you know, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. And I just hope and pray that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, removing some of the distractions that I have and more, more or less focusing on I don't like and get some things accomplished of you, my top priority. And, you know, try to be on time next time from this distraction. Appreciate y'all for y'all here. Yeah? Thank you, sir. That was good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> but we always appreciate when you uh, can join us. We know you have a lot going on, but we're thankful that you, you're here. Anyone else? Mr. Ed, when you have anything we want to hear from you today before we close it out. Oh, no. Okay, can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, well, uh, I, I don't really have too too much to add uh, tonight. I, I just really enjoyed the word from Miss Alice and Miss Summer Kay. Uh, Miss Alice, you tore it up. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I was just sitting over, you can hear, ask Brittany, I'm over here just hollering. I, that's, I know that's right, you know. Uh, but I, I, I'm just at hoping for uh, my mindset to be redirected for 2021 uh, because because of the distractions of 2020. So uh, I, I just want to they say if you knew better, you do better. So I feel like I know a little better now. So I'm trying to go into 2021 and do a little better. <laughs> yes, sir. That, that's a, a good point to have. Awesome, awesome. So as D say, no need to make a New Year's resolution. You know, D, I don't make them either. I just get up. If I don't get it right this week, Monday is my start again. I get up Monday morning and say, you know what? I'm going to try to do this, do this. I'm going to bring this discipline in this part of my life. And uh, if I make it, then that's good. If not, then I the next Monday coming around again. You know, so I keep it moving. I don't get frustrated because a lot of times we get distracted. Sometimes we get discouraged in our distractions just because, you know, I'm a 
to just distract and I, I had it mapped out and what happened wasn't supposed to happen and you know we we uh kind of wallow in that pity right there but you got to keep moving forward you know if it's something that wasn't supposed to happen learn from it and keep moving forward keep moving forward so I, I'm thankful to have each and every person here anybody else have anything to say before we close it down this evening don't want to hold you too long and worry your patience. But I hope that everyone got something out of this, out of everyone that spoke. I hope it was something said that penetrated your spirit and it makes you get off of here and really do some evaluation to see where you can make changes and adjustments in your life. When you all get a chance, uh, Summer Payne, she got off. She had something else to do, but Summer Payne got engaged over the holidays. So we want to definitely send her a congratulations. Uh, we're definitely happy for, for her and the new union that's coming up. Anyone else have anything that happened over the holiday that they want to share before we wrap it up? Any good thing? No, well, hey, it's a blessing. We all crossed over and made it to 2021. Like As we heard, a lot of people said a lot of folks didn't make it, but it's definitely a blessing. So that means that God ain't through with you yet. It is something inside of you that he needs to pull out because someone needs it. So make sure that uh, you're doing what it takes to not get distracted and to stay focused. Uh, Miss Summer K, can you invite the people out to our Toastmasters. We're thankful that we did have one come to Toastmasters and join Mr. Craig. And uh, that, that's an awesome uh, accomplishment because it's gonna help with leadership and the things that he have, has a desire to endeavor in. So Ms. Summer K, can you uh, invite the nice people out on Tuesday? Absolutely, I can, certainly. A new opportunity has availed itself as you crossed over into 2021. And as you have made up your mind to become that groomed male and female, that prime opportunities await you the more. We invite you to Toastmasters or Toastmasters on Tuesday night, where we are virtual. Make it at the comfort of your own, whether you're in your vehicle, in your home, at your workplace, or even if you're jogging, even if you're taking your treadmill tried. <laughs> we welcome you to come so that you will be able to excel and soar in your public speaking, in your leadership, entrepreneurial, network working, as well well as self-development at any given podium and any given place at any given time. Our motto is and has been, you may come as you are, but you will not remain as you came. And truly, that's a promise we can keep. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been invited. We look forward to seeing you. And feel free to contact Lady Kaya. She is our VPM, Vice President of Membership, and she will provide you our new 2021 link. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Remember this, I, your network is your net worth. So the, your, your network, the, the people that you connect with, the people on here, there's a lot of people, I think everyone to come together, no one knew other than my mother knew me, but no one else knew anybody else. I think uh, maybe D knew my mother, but uh, just being in a platform with new people, networking. Make sure that even on social media that you're reaching out and connecting with these people because someone may can help you on your journey. And that's what we're here for. We're definitely not here to you know, be selfish and keep the information that we have. So feel free to reach out to me if there's anything that I could do to help you. And I'm gonna do the same as well. I volunteered all of you, so um, <laughs> thank you. Miss uh, Summer K, will you take us out in prayer? One of our prayer requests uh, that I want to do is the people that we have that usually join with us that we have not seen. Let's keep them lifted in prayer. There are some um, prayer requests that we're not going to open up, but just I just want to say the people that are not here, let's keep them lifted up. That God will keep them covered. If it's anything going on with them, they're sick. We want to ask for healing uh, for their bodies as well. Does anyone else have any prayer requests that they would like to uh, render right now? If not, Ms. Summer K, then the floor is yours. Whereas all minds are clear and hearts are receptive. Gracious God, it is a new day that the Lord has made. 
and the close of that day has come nigh. We thank you for this day that the Lord has made and given unto us. You blessed us with mercies anew this morning and loaded us with benefits. And as we come before you, we ask you to give ear, O Lord, to our prayer and attend to the voice of our supplication. Because you are our eternal God, the God who sits exceptionally high and look exceedingly low. Your eyes are in every place and you behold the evil and the good. Kind Father, we thank you for being our refuge, our fortress, and our strength. We ask you as we now make that declaration to declare and decree a thing that it shall be established in the earth. These are thine, your people, and you know the way that we are to take for you a God that goes before us. Father, you said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Thereby that we would not walk after our flesh, but after the Holy Spirit, that we would be renewed daily. And the renewing comes easy when we learn how to repent. When we repent for the sins that we have done against thee and against thee only. When we repent for word, thought, and deed. When we repent for action, behavior, and conduct. This way, and only this way, Father, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins. Cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. And God, restore your people into the manner and the privileges to which you have predestined and prepared for us. We ask you this kind, Father, to remember those that are not present with us, that we have not seen, and even some that may we have seen recently. We ask you, kind Father, to remember them and where they have need of thee right now. You know their situation. You know their condition. You know the matters that are set before them. You know even what they face, that they are even somewhat ashamed to say out loud. But you are God, the present help in the time of trouble. You are God that will deliver us out with your mighty hand. You are God that doesn't sleep or slumber. You are the keeper of Israel. And we ask you now to be that present help. We ask you now to go into the places where they are. Even right this very moment, we ask you to dispatch your angels to do battle in the spirit on their behalf in Jesus' name. Kind Father, you told us to be careful for nothing, but in everything prayer, supplication with thanksgiving, making our request, our petition, our need, our desire known unto you. And therefore, Father, we touch and agree with our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus as we make these petitions known, whereas they have need of thee, that you would supply the need according to thy riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We ask you as our God, who sits exceptionally high, that your eyes are in every place. We ask you to gird around and about them, Father. Let the voice of the Lord, which is like upon the waters, you are the God of our glory. You thundereth according to your word. And you, because you are all a part of the land that which you created and you oversee it, we ask that you call upon your voice, the voice of the Lord that renders the strongholds depleted. We ask that we call upon the voice of the Lord, our God, that will roar over your people, that will cause the enemy to be at bay and stand still, that the foe is defeated, that you've empowered us to tread upon the scorpions and the serpents and all the powers of the enemy. By no means and in no wise shall it do us any harm. And therefore, we call upon the voice of the Lord that roars over your people, that calls the foes that are defeated to know that that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Any tongue that rise up against us shall be condemned in Jesus' name. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down, the uprooting, the destroying of any and every stronghold. For every stronghold, every strong man by, have not just only been divinely displaced from us, but God removed, no longer have access, have entry toward us. Because we're in the hand of the Lord. Father, we thank you now that as your people, that their ears will awaken, awaken to the voice of the good shepherd 
and a stranger's voice that they shall not follow, that their minds become alert and their hearts become receptive, that their tongue is now disciplined and the Lord utters his voice through us, each and every one, that when we speak, we will not speak of ourselves, but we will speak what saith the Father by his spirit. Father, we ask you to touch everybody that is ailing right now in Jesus name. Anything that is in their life that is cooperating with the spirit of infirmity, sickness and disease. We ask you now to withdraw the, the cooperation by the fire of God in Christ Jesus. We ask you now to sever its attachment. Give your people wisdom how to properly intake the natural things and herbs that you prepared for healing. Because there's healing in the father's wings. Heal the body that needs to be healed. Restore, fulfill, strengthen, make a fresh and a new, re-energize in the name of Jesus Christ. Give them to know to cry aloud unto you and you will answer. You can turn it all around because you are the Lord God that healeth thee. We thank you for the overflowing into a new year because if it had not been for Jesus Christ on our side, if it had not been for your mercies on you each and every morning, if it had not been for your abundance of grace, the question is, where would we be? We are able to say we are now yet living in the presence of the Lord. We thank you for that healing virtue. We thank you for delivering them out with your mighty hand. We thank you for restoring them unto good health. For the years that the canker and the palmer have stolen, make them afresh and anew and restore the years of good health unto their bodies. Make them whole, unique, and complete in Jesus' name. Remember God. We know that you are our God. And besides thee, there is none other. Our help comes from the Lord. Bless your maid servant as she go forth in the year of 2021 to fulfill the vision that you've given her on this platform. Bless the works of her hands. Bless divine connections that she would not encounter that which is not of your will, but walk in the way that is pleasing unto you. Remember every household that is represented. Dispatch the angels to go before them now in Jesus' name, even unto those who have children that must go to the school. We dispatch angels upon the rooftop, the parking lot, inside the building, at the doors, at the windows, in the administrative offices. We dispatch angels down the hall. We dispatch angels in the cafeteria, in the library, the science labs, the nurses station. We dispatch the angels of the Lord that protect, that cover, that watch over and bind up every matter, a form of sickness, germs, disease, bacteria of every type and kind that as they go in, that they will turn out safe in the land of the living. This we ask and we pray. We thank you now, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, ma'am, for sealing us with that prayer. We receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you to each and every one of you for joining us. And again, we'll be back here next Sunday, same time, same place. Invite someone to come with you. I'm looking for some great things to take place in 2021. I'm also looking for some of you to uh, help to co-host as well. So I'll definitely be reaching out to you all one by one. Y'all have a great evening. And remember, I love you and there is nothing that you can do about it. Take care. I have a good one. All righty.